Having a general understanding of the anatomy and nomenclature of scleral lenses can have a dramatic impact on our success with them. Although there are many curves that make up the scleral lens, the anatomy is typically broken down into the central optic zone, the limbal transition zone, and the scleral landing zone. The central zone is that portion of the lens that is over the central portion of the cornea and provides the optics of the lens to the eye. The limbal transition zone is the part of the lens that is just distal to the central portion of the lens and when on the eye is over the limbal corneal region. The scleral landing zone is that portion of the lens that is the outer ring of the lens and also the part that rests on the conjunctiva and underlying sclera. Each of these zones needs to be evaluated when fitting a patient. The following are terms that are typically used to describe the lens fit. Central touch is when the surface of the lens is touching on the central or paracentral portion of the cornea. When this occurs, you'll need to increase the sagittal depth. Corneal clearance is when the back surface of the lens sits above the surface of the cornea. You'll either want to measure this with your OCT or determine the amount from the estimation method using a known corneal thickness or lens thickness. We ideally look for the corneal clearance to be between 150 to 300 microns. In the limbal transition zone, touch can occur when the lens angles down too steeply and places pressure on the limbal portion of the cornea. We like to see clearance of the limbal area since this is where the corneal stem cells are generated. Limbal transition zone clearance is when the lens clears the corneal limbal area. The scleral landing zone is the region of the lens that rests upon the conjunctiva and underlying sclera. When not resting appropriately, three things can occur. Scleral impingement, scleral compression, and edge lift. Impingement of the lens is when the very outer edge of the lens is digging into the conjunctival tissue, which may cause blanching of the blood vessels at the most distal portion of the lens. Compression is seen when there is excessive pressure on the conjunctiva and underlying sclera in the most proximal portion of the scleral landing zone. This can create blanching of the blood vessels under this region of the lens. Edge lift can occur when the very outer portion of the scleral landing zone of the lens is lifting off of the conjunctiva. When this occurs, it can cause some discomfort for the patient. For more details on impingement, compression, or clearance, you'll find separate videos on these topics in this scleral lens series housed at www.fitboston.com. Regardless of which scleral lens you're fitting, when you understand the anatomy and nomenclature of the lens, communicating the fitting characteristics with your colleagues and lab partners is much easier. Understanding this will ultimately improve your lens fitting success.